the Dow at 6,000 by 2016. If I look at the socialist groups in government and some of the big banks that work with them who always want to saddle Homer Simpson with their bad bets and, and their derivatives and other counterfeit instruments, their plan is clearly set up at the police state being done worldwide. They're financing that. And then as things collapse, pose like they're the savior and take over the pension funds, the private pension funds, the government pension funds, and really not even scale back uh, a lot of the uh, payments uh, and things that former government workers and others are going to be getting that are clearly unsustainable. And so they don't take a haircut. Everybody else does. And if you don't like it, well, Homeland Security now basically lists not liking the Federal Reserve policy is terrorism. And the Tea Party is terrorist. And uh, re returning veterans are dangerous and gun owners. We see the move now to use Northcom Homeland Security as a domestic control arm in the storm that's coming. And that they're going to use the economic crisis to get everybody on welfare, basically. Use the scaled up industrial capacity to at least give people their bread and circus. Uh, even though it's scaling down, it's still scaled up from whatever was in history to where they can give people their baubles, their bread and circuses, and then in exchange convert us to a authoritarian system where the big banks are above the law with corporate diplomatic immunity ruling over us with a form of global governance and a hundred trillion every decade in carbon taxes to fund and back their SDRs. Now, Mr. Dent, from what I've studied, you study demographics. I study the wide spectrum, but I know you study that as well. You're one of the smartest guys out there on record when it comes to predicting things. Do you, do you disagree with the gestalt I just threw out, or do you add something to it? Because it looks like this is pretty well planned out to me. Well, yeah, th that is the trend. Governments kind of take more power, and yeah, and things go wrong. It gives them a reason to step in. I, yeah, I say it's even worse than that, Alex, because what they're doing here is killing the golden goose. They're they're rejecting the free market capitalist system that made us so rich. That requires booms and busts, inflation and deflation, innovation, creative destruction. You have to have failure as part of the system. It doesn't work without success and failure. And they're just saying, no, nothing can fail. We can't let big companies go under. We can't let banks that made terrible loans go under. And we can't flush this debt out of our system. Like I say, the best thing that could happen for, for the average household is they get their mortgage written down to what the house is now worth. And I see houses going down much more in the next crisis. So I think the only the only saving grace for me, Alex, because politically, we'll never deal with these entitlements. We'll never deal with this debt. We'll, we'll never let government kind of take and you know, give, you know, give up their control of the economy, we're going to have to have a crisis. The government's going to have to fail. People are going to have to lose faith in central banks, quantitative easing, which is just like taking more and more of a drug to keep coming down off a high. That's all it does, creating money out of thin air. That's another way to create debt, just like bank loans that get too high. We need to basically have a crisis so we can have a revolution because this is not going to happen politically. And I think you're right. The government's almost in some ways a crisis would give them the chance to step in and have more control and, and you know, martial law and stuff at times. But I think what's going to happen is the crisis is going to be so bad that people are going to lose faith in, 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 in governments and especially China. Now, you know, economists say, oh, China's like the new state capitalism, the new model. Wow, look how great they're doing. China, to me, mark my words, is going to prove that governments don't know how to manage economies and shouldn't manage economies. They should, should just set clear, good, simple rules and let the free markets work and let them go up and down and let them succeed and let them fail. Let them invest. Let them innovate. They're killing the golden goose. So to me, it's, it's, it's even worse than, than what you're saying because you kill capitalism and, and, and we're already aging. We're already going to slow just from aging and slowing demographics. Like you say, no replacement race for most populations and we're better than most because of, you know we have higher than japan or germany uh but but man china has really gone off the reservation if, if we're printing uh money they're printing condos and just building railroad stations and bridges and highways and office buildings and malls that are empty um, in cities and whole cities. So, so this is the craziest thing that ever happened. It, I, I, to me, if we don't have a crisis soon, we're in real trouble. I agree with you, but the establishment cannot...
stand to let things be somewhat free, even somewhat. They've right. got to micromanage it. They've got to give the insiders the knowledge. They've got to bail out Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan yeah. and then sign the debt onto us and have the media a year later say, I mean, in 2008, it was their fault. A year later, it was how I was in debt. I was bad. I owed the trillions. I owed, uh, you know, millions of dollars to the government and the aggregate. A total fraud. But I got to say, Mr. Dent, a lot of it lies with the public. If the public politically is so mesmerized with Justin Bieber and LeBron James and all the rest of the propaganda and, and, and have had liberty and, and wealth so long that the public, not on not everybody, but a large portion of them are delusional, dumbed down, stupid, lazy, give me a handout. Uh, scum who literally look at me and think I need to pay more so they can sit on their butts. A, do you agree with that? B, what happens when it all goes to hell in a handbasket? I see the hordes of them voting in a democracy, not a republic, two wolves and a sheep voting on what's for dinner, to literally politically bring in authoritarianism and absolutely make the producers their slaves or a French revolution. I mean, every angle of this, I just see bad to worse. Well, you know, yeah, I would add to that that we're also spoiled. We, we've had the greatest boom in history, really, since World War II, but but especially 1983 to 2007, and that was just a 46-year lag that we show in the demographic clip, as simple as economic tool. Just a 46-year lag on the baby boom birth index. So this baby boom created a great boom, but then but we thought, hey, yeah, everybody's supposed to retire with hundred thousand dollar a year pensions and and you know all this you know Social Security, medical, Medicare, Medicaid. We can't even for the health care we had, and now we're expanding it. Paul Ryan's plan wasn't even close to what it would take to balance out entitlement. So we're spoiled, and I think we need reality. And, and I've got to hope that, that when things go down, if we have a big enough crisis, people will realize. I mean, governments, economists, businesses, and everyday people realize we're bankrupt. We're not bankrupt like Chapter 7, because we're still the largest country in the world, and we got better demographics than most of our competitors. But we cannot go on with these debt levels and these entire. We've got to write the ship. We've got to wake up and get real. We've got to wake up and smell the coffee. And I think that's what the good thing is. People realize, I, I used to turn around companies at Bain and & Company, and, and I did it with small business as well. And when a company's really in a crisis, people get real really quick. And you can make changes. You can fire half the people. And people agree to it because they realize if we don't fire half the people, 100% of us are going to lose our jobs. And the company's going to die. So people get more clear. So I've got some level of faith that when we have a crisis, people will wake up and they will get smarter about things. And then they'll listen. I, I hate this. I mean, most people don't listen to people like me. Oh, I'm too bearish. Look, I've been bullish for 20 some years. I predicted this great boom when nobody saw it coming and, and predicted the fall of Japan and all these other countries to follow. But but they'll start listening to people who told them the right things. Everybody's telling them it's okay. Warren Buffett, of all people, is getting out there saying it's okay. The government's doing the right thing. What? How can the right thing be printing trillions of dollars out of thin air to cover over a debt crisis? How could that possibly be the right thing? And then but signing us on to more debt. And yeah, then Obama, Obama saying raising debt doesn't raise debt. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. We, we should just, there, there there has to be a standard. It can't be gold anymore because gold isn't big enough and consistent enough with the, with the new economy. But we need standards that say debt can only grow this fast compared to GDP and can only reach certain limits. You can't allow unlimited debt. And that's what we've done. We have run trade deficits since the early 70s. We've run budget deficits except for a few years, and they got bigger in the boom. Even Keynes, or that crazy guy, which he never invented his theory, but at least he said governments should run surpluses and booms and then run deficits to balance out the private economy. But we've been running budget deficits in booms and busts. You can't, and debt grew at 2.7 sure. times GDP from 1983 to 2008. You can't have debt grow that much faster in the economy and not end up bankrupt and in a debt crisis. Any economy sure. that didn't see this coming doesn't know their ass from a hole in the wall. That's right. Let's talk about Let's talk about gold. I have gold as an emergency backup hedge for collapse, for inflation, for whatever it is. Literally like pirates, you know, bury your gold. That's what I've got it for. I don't have it as an investment. And I'm, I bought most of my gold between $300 and $500 an ounce. So even if it plunges or even goes up, whatever, I've got it. I'm not selling it until, you know, we ever go to a road warrior situation. And then I know it'll have some value. But, but separate from that, I mean, are we talking about... 
uh, you know, raw land? Are we talking about skills? I mean, for the average person, uh, what do you do? Well, well, again, gold is in a bubble. I was debating Peter Schiff in St. Kitts, and I know you know him, and he's saying gold's not in a bubble. I said gold went up almost seven times between 2000 and, and, and 2011. That's a bubble. We said gold, the bubble's going to be the last bubble to burst. It is bursting. I think gold's going to see $700 an ounce by 2016 when the Dow is at five or 6000 and I think it's going to see two fifty to 400 um, around the turn of the next decade before a big commodity cycle uh, uh, bottoms. I mean, commodities peak every 29, 30 years like a clock. So, so I don't agree with the gold bugs on that. And the truth is there is nowhere to go. You put your money in safe stuff, liquid cash and cash flow is king in a deflationary crisis. And then if you want stuff, I want stuff I can trade. I want shotgun shells, you know, I want little bourbon bottles. I want, and I want silver coins even more than gold. No, I agree. I got more silver gold. than gold. Yeah. yeah. Silver is great for, for, for exchanging and buying stuff. Food, you know, dried food 